good afternoon and welcome to my channel today i want to quickly talk about advantages and disadvantages buying properties there are processes that you need to follow when you are buying properties there are some things that you need to be aware of let's talk about the first thing transfer cost or transfer procedure all contracts to acquire land must be in writing that's number one all contracts to acquire land must be in writing that's number one it also contains certain prescribed information and be signed by both the buyer and the seller to be a binding and legal document most contracts of buying a property usually comes as a form of an offer to purchase which once it is accepted by the seller forms a binding contract or constitutes an agreement of sale once this agreement is signed by both parties i mean the buyer and the seller that constitutes a legal and binding agreement of sale which if either of the party decide to cancel might cause them some consequences of bridging that agreement nevertheless there is a condition in the agreement of sale or the offer to purchase which is called the suspensive condition what is a suspensive condition take for instance take for instance if the seller agrees to your offer of 1 million rand for argument's sake and the suspensive condition in the offer to purchase stipulates that the purchaser should get a loan from the bank for a certain amount of money or value. Say for instance, the purchaser wants to get a loan of 800,000 which he or she can actually come up with the balance of 200,000 rand if according to the offer to purchase the buyer stipulated that they want a loan of not less than 800,000 and eventually the bank gave a quotation or a loan of such amount of 800,000 then the suspensive condition has been met but if the bank gives the purchaser a loan of 750,000 rand the suspensive condition has not been met meaning the buyer can either withdraw from the agreement of sale that is already enforced by both party signing the contract or if the buyer knows that you can come up with the difference initially you were looking for 250,000 but now it turns out that you will need a deposit of 250,000 rand so the suspensive condition has not been met yet so you can either withdraw or accept that offer 
and put in a deposit of 250,000 rand. Then, if you accept that bond grant, then the suspensive condition would have deemed to have been met. But you can still approach the bank or maybe another bank to see if they will be willing to give you a bigger quotation or a bigger amount. And if not, then you can either look for another property, speak to your agent, let them get you something that will meet up with your budget. There is something also called cooling off period. Cooling off period actually applies to property lower than 250,000 rand. So if you are buying a property above 250,000 rand, there is no cooling off period. So the first thing in a property transaction, if you want to buy a property, before you start to shop for the property, the first thing to do is to put your financials together. Because if you go ahead and shop for property and while you are not even qualified for what you are looking for, then it's a complete waste of time, both for you and for the agent. So the first thing you need to do is to do a pre-approval. A pre-approval is you submitting all your necessary documents for assessment of how much you can qualify for a bond. And usually that is done for free. Free. Mahala. You get that for free. So, even if you are not looking to buy properties at this point, you should get a pre-approval done maybe once in a year to get you prepared for when you are actually ready or to get you prepared for the time that you are going to be ready. Feel free to speak to your agent or to a property practitioner for questions or understanding of how things work. Remember, each cases are different from each other. Just like you go into a doctor and you tell the doctor that you are having headache. I believe there are different type of headache. Severe headache or just an headache. And there are some headaches that actually occurs when you take too much alcohol or maybe you take some alcohol. You can also develop headaches. You can treat all headache the same way. So basically, your doctor will analyze each case from each other to determine what kind of medication will actually work for you. Likewise, likewise the same with properties. If you want to buy, speak to a professional. Let them give you advice on how to go, where to go, and when to go. So property registration process or transfer procedure is dealt with by a special qualified legal practitioner known as a conveyancer. It is customary for the seller to appoint their own conveyancer. And the thing behind the seller appointing their own conveyancer is simply because the proceed of the sale will actually be for the seller. So the seller have the right to choose their own conveyancer. But in most cases, 
the seller would decide to go with the same conveyancer the agent or the agency are familiar with or the same conveyancer that the agency are already using but the cost of the conveyancer is born is born by the purchaser the purchaser is the one buying the property so the purchaser is the one who needs the conveyancer's service the cost of the transfer is usually for the purchaser that is the norm on unless contractually agreed to otherwise the conveyancers are the one or the conveyancers are the legal entity or the legal practitioner who does transfer of properties from the current owner to the new owner once the offer has been signed and accepted by the seller then the document which is the agreement of sale will actually have to go to the next stage and the next stage will determine if it is a cash deal or it's going to go through finance if the if if the agreement of sale will be financed by a financial institution like the banks fmb apsa standard bank net bank or sa home loan they require the bank the bank will require you to submit an offer to purchase which is duly signed be, between between the seller and the buyer and other necessary documents for finance to be approved like your bank statement your salary pay slip your copy of your id etc etc once the document has been submitted to the bank the bank will assess that document and and evaluate what needs the bank will assess the document and decide on what amount of percentage they are willing to give you based on your agreed amount or based on your purchase price once the bank are done with the assessment they decide and come back to you with an answer to say we are willing to give you x amount of money maybe 100% 90% 80% of the purchase price then it's now left to you if you have the deposit so once the finance has been settled the next stage the document will actually go to the conveyancer that is when the conveyancer will start the process of transfer registration period takes between 8 to 12 weeks if there are no unforeseen delays what do i mean by unforeseen delays take for instance the municipal statement says 10000 rand the seller hold to the municipal but when the figure came out it tend to be 100000 rand no seller will pay this amount just like that without a fight so definitely the 
the question that amount and while questioning the amount this might take some time to rectify on the other hand maybe the seller was supposed to sign a document and unfortunately is tied up somewhere that he can't actually sign it he signed it after a week so definitely that week also counts we are going to look at the transfer process in another episode we've talked a bit about the cost but let me just tell you what cost to the seller and cost to the buyer the cost to the seller are called the figures the figures what the figure means is the total amount that the seller of the particular property is owing to that property either to municipality or in any other form as long as that property is attached to that amount it's the responsibility of the seller to pay such amount before the property can be transferred so they call it the figures those are the amounts payable by the seller it include the rate and taxes on the property if it's up to date the municipal electricity if it's up to date the water account if it's up to date so it all depends it varies it goes on and on not that much those are the cost to the seller and before i forget the agent commission <laughs> yes agent commission it's very important because that is because that is why or what we work for and the cost to the seller to the buyer and and the cost to the buyer are the costs of transfer that's all the buyer don't pay any other cost than the cost of transferring the property from the previous owner from the current owner to the new owner to be the conveyance costs are divided into two forms the bond cost and the transfer cost the bond fee and the transfer fee if you are buying by finance you will be born to pay both bond fee and transfer fee but if you are buying cash you will only be liable for the transfer fee that means it's just one attorney or one conveyancer that will oversee this transaction but if it's a bond then there are two conveyances that will oversee the transactions both cost can actually you can you can have in mind both cost need you need to consult a professional real estate agent or the conveyancer or a conveyancer to give you an estimate of the cost of transfer and remember if you are buying a property above 1 million rand you will be liable to pay transfer duty remember there is no transfer duty if you are buying a property below 1 million rand but if you are buying above 1 million there is transfer duty applicable but if vat is not applicable 
then transfer duty will be applicable. If VAT is applicable, then transfer duty would not be applicable. So once the attorneys or the conveyances are finished with the trans, uh, the, once the attorney, once the attorney or the conveyances are finished with the documentation, they lodge those documents at the deed office. Once the property has been lodged at the deed office, then in less than 10 working days, the property will be transferred and registered in the new purchaser's name. At that point, the risk and liability of that property is passed on to the new owner.